Well, hello there, YouTube, and welcome to a very doom and gloom. <laughs> it just looks that way. It's actually pretty nice out there. 60 degree Sunday, the 22nd of October. It's kind of peaceful out here today. It hasn't rained in a little bit, so uh, things are starting to dry out. But it's uh, supposed to be off and on rain for the most part of the day. So they say anyway, but look at that. Come walking out and I see little blue patches here and there. That's looking pretty good. Heck yeah. So I ordered uh, uh, some Enjora wagon wheels. You know, the wheels I put on the, um, the early Ford Bronco by Axial, the CX-10. Point three, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I found some weighted uh, wagon wheels like that that supposedly will fit the stock tires. We'll see when they show up. And then for for the early Ford Bronco, the Axial, um, my uh, the one that I did the mods to Kelly's is completely stock. I mean, absolutely completely stock. Um. It doesn't seem to have the problem, but when I put those wagon wheels on on mine with all the mods and stuff on it, it pushed so bad those Mickey Thompson is it Mickey Thompson? Yeah, Mickey Mickey Thompson tires. It started to deteriorate the foams up front. So uh, yeah, anyway, I found a, an overdrive front end for that. It'll come in. She says there's something else I got too. Just piddly little things you. You need to, to do those kind of things. But anyway, that'll make that. That's the other trucks. The other truck that had a really pro a bad problem pushing the front end around. But, um, oh, best of all, um, uh, Muse, Muse, M-E-U-S, a company that makes a bunch of really cool RC car stuff. They have an in-between transmission for the um, TRX4 uh, 118th scales. So stock is basically 25, 26 to one, and the low ratio is 40 to one. I finally figured out the numbers. And the uh, Enjora one that I put in the Bronco is the same ratio, I think just the motor, because I notice it's getting faster as I keep playing with it. Um, motor was fresh, transmission was fresh. It was probably just a difference of having a bunch of runtime on the Defender. That's why it was faster. But uh, anyway, there's an in-between transmission that's a, uh, I forget what, what number it is. I think it's 16, is it 16? 16 to 1 is the standard transmission. Uh, and the 26, I think, is this middle one. So it's a 39% um lower gear reduction but it's halfway between the standard and the low so that'll give it some some good speed got a lot of really good reviews on it um so anyway i got that coming to put in the bronco um the defender i like it just the way it is the bronco i kind of like the little bit of extra speed and i kept noticing that when i need to hop over something it just doesn't have enough speed to like hop over things you get kind of stuck sometimes so yeah that muse moose muse um perfect and they have if you like to go you, you know if you find that the high speed transmission is too fast there's an in-between between standard and speed transmission i love it when a company thinks outside the box and comes in the middle where nobody else has even thought of that so can't wait to put that in because uh I guess with the um, Enjora 180 Pro motor, it'll have basically the same speed as the standard transmission with the stock motor, but yet you have all the crawling power and extra torque. But uh, anyway, let's tinker with something here. I've been playing with those 118th scale trucks so much that I bring Kelly's stock axial early Ford Bronco out here and it feels just so huge. It almost it's almost comical. It's so big. This is a the only thing I did do to it is I relocated the um, shock mounts. Is a way you can locate them down, and it drops them basically from a hundred millimeter shocks to ninety. But you have the full throw of the shocks because you didn't put shorter shocks. You just mounted them, 
um, basically 10 millimeters lower so it makes it way more stable when you're driving around it's not so tipsy these these things were really bad tipsy it's weird driving with a, a stock motor and a tenth scale i'm used to them with the 118th scale but uh all the bigger trucks i have all have fusion motors in them whether it's a fusion se or or a pro and uh even though i've got the this thing in a trail mode mapping mode it pretty much has like no trail braking now watch that's i'm not touching the throttle that's just free rolling it has some built-in trail braking but then you guys that crawl you know you gotta see I actually bought two of those transmissions because if i like it enough i'm gonna put the other one not transmission but uh um, the overdrive ring and pinion for the front of these it's a 10 percent overdrive so uh if i like it mine i'll put it in kelly's too because it it i mean it's a noticeable difference in how they perform when you do that it's funny you come out here with it man that sun's about to come out but um it's a noticeable difference Look at this, I got it stuck. The one you got. <laughs> I lost what I was trying to say, but I noticed when I come out of here to the 118 scale after playing with one tenth so much that um, it just seems so small and non capable. Now you come out here and it, with a one tenth scale and it feels cumbersome and too big for everything. <laughs> But this thing, completely stock. You buy it right out of the box. And it does a fantastic job. It's kind of like the Traxxas. If you don't <clears throat> don't feel like doing anything to them, don't. You know, most of the stuff you watch people um, do on crawls, like at events and stuff, they're completely stock. I was watching this guy with his family out um, rock crawling. And he had a um, F-150, and other than some bodywork stuff to make it look a little different, that F-150 high trail was completely stock. I don't know, if, I mean, if there was something done, I couldn't see it. It looked like stock shocks. You could hear that he had the stock motor in it. It didn't seem like he even had like a Hobby Wing 1080 electronic speed controller in it either because the trail braking seemed very stock and absolutely functional he was going everywhere no problem tons of fun so you don't don't need to spend anything this like this truck right here is proof stone stock is perfectly fine it's just like my bronco <laughs> stock is perfectly fine but you do little things that you know like bearings and stuff and adds reliability although questionably bearings are probably more susceptible to failure then the bushings just got to keep everything clean, you know. But anyway, you don't have to spend a bunch of money on these things to have a ton of fun. I enjoy the heck out of riding this, driving this thing stock. But then when I drive mine with the fusion motor and the different shocks and all the stuff I've done, I'm going, yeah, that's that's way nicer. <laughs> but anyway. When you overdrive those front ends, they turn so much sharper that uh, it doesn't take so many multi-point turns to get them turned around. Now those fusion motors, that trail braking work so good. <laughs> she kind of gets a little tipsy with that, doesn't she? Coming off of that thing in a turn. Yeah. <laughs> 
trail breaking even when the throttle's off she still got some roll to her that's okay it teaches you how to drive them properly use brakes like you're supposed to use brakes so i went in and swapped out for my um early ford bronco and this one's this one's got some mods in it those are those uh um rc4 wheel drive wagon wheels some mickey thompson tires it's got the Proline big bore shocks. The, I think this has got the Fusion SE motor in it, I'm pretty sure. And then just little trinky things I've put around on it. I don't remember all the stuff I've done. It's got a winch. It's got an internal winch, the weighted diff covers. Um, the rings, the wheels aren't weighted. Uh, little D rings and Jeez, I don't know. Did all kinds of stuff to it. The only thing I have a steering servo, is it for this one or the Gen 9? I don't remember. One of them, I got everything done and realized I didn't put the steering servo in there. Because I found, you remember, I had to, I finally found a steel 25 tooth um, steering horn for it. Anyway, this one, definitely a, definitely a runner. With that fusion motor, it just makes all the difference in the world. Well, it's immediately, it's very, very touchy. The bumper's gonna drag right away. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I'm too far over though. I'm gonna flip it over on its side. Oh yeah. It's literally three wheeling at the moment. Let's see if we can get it, get it right in. Here we are. I do love those wheels on there and I like the tires there's no um, um, dual foams in it but they push really really bad yeah, you can see if you look at that outside wheel here you can see the, the tires literally rolling on the rim but them being soft like that they'll literally go over anything pretty much and things like this, you'll notice that you'll get the front end to drag. There, as I say that, it goes right up. Probably because the tires are so much better, but Kelly's wouldn't go up that. But if you can get them front wheels to spin just a little bit faster than the rear, you can get over weird things like that. Love those wagon wheels though. They just look so cool. And I've got the actual, um, uh, ground lights or rock lights, rock lights. Can't remember the name of them. Let's switch sides here. Man, I don't know how we're getting blessed with that sun. But if that keeps up too much, you might not see any of this footage. I'm going to take off on a motorcycle. These shocks are, um, they're less sticky. They're really, really smooth. So you get a little more uh, body torque out of, chassis torque out of them. See how it just pushes them, them front wheels. It's like really bad. Oh, I caught that board. It's not gonna let go of it either, is it? There we are. I think I got a hold of it again. <laughs> Good Lord. They're even sticky when you're not on the treads. But watch how it'll, see how it just drags them tires. Well, it's done that so much, pushing them around, it's, it's caused the foam inside to break down. And the really nice thing is, is you have total trail braking. Let go of the throttle. She's rock solid. got quite a bit more speed to it too than the stock motor 
and it's a two speed. I got them both set up so they're two speeds. Were there two speeds out of the box? I think you had to choose one or the other if I remember right. And I got the extra servo. So it'll work either way. Pretty cool stuff, man. Just that quick. <laughs> we lost the nice skies and the looks like clouds are rolling back in. Love these little Broncos, man. These little axles, they're, they're not that expensive. They're fun as heck to, they time out too. <laughs> the red cats will, will time out too. You'll get beepers reminding you, hey, you've left your model and you haven't touched anything for a while. You might wanna, might wanna tend to your vehicle. A lot of fun though. Can't wait to get the um, overdriven front end on these things. If it makes a difference on these like it did the Gen 9 Red Cat. Yeah, that's huge. It did the same thing with the little TRX-4Ms too. They sure do steer a lot better. Without, you know, having the ability to un unlock the differentials. That's, that's really important. Well, hello there, you two. Man, here at the very end of the day, now beautiful, yeah. beautiful sunshine's out. Yeah, clears off at the end of the day when yeah. it's going to get dark. Colder than holy heck. Yeah, we only got like 25 minutes before the sun's down. Yeah. 6.12 is sunset tonight. That blows. Man, days are getting shorter. Mm hmm Next thing you know, it'll be impossible unless you're in the middle of the day yeah. to do a, an outside goodbye. But, uh, that happens every year, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> then we're all excited when we can do our first, you know, daylight goodbye in the beginning of the next year, you know? Yeah. That's nice. Because the time will change here the 5th of November. Yeah. And we got very long at all. And when that switches, it's, uh, it'll be dark now. Yeah. But at the same time. But anyway, another chill day. Kind of doomy and gloomy most of the day. It was. But, um, yeah. Ended it off because I think it's supposed to be nice tomorrow. It's probably where oh, that's tomorrow's probably where weather's slither, slithering in on us. Mm -hmm. But uh, you go out there and do a dark ride or something, but yeah, have to get all bundled up and all that stuff, drag yeah. everything out. Probably wet spots. Any, any place there's a shade, you would shh, you'd be hissing through the water. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh man, just one little patch of that will wipe your motorcycle out. Yeah, just walking through the yard, the grass is so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll get you good. But uh, anyway, I think on that, we're going to roll out and end our weekend and start a new work week tomorrow. Yeah. All righty. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. We will talk to you tomorrow. Same smoke time, same smoke channel. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And you guys have an amazing Monday or Tuesday. Heck yeah. All right. We'll see you in the morning. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching now. <laughs> Bye-bye.